On the left is a helmet we made using EVA foam. To the right of that is one we crafted using leather. And in this video, we will 3D scan this leather helmet and 3D print it using the new Thinker X400 from everyone. The first print is PETG, and the one on the far right is printed using flexible TPU. This is a handcrafted leather helmet that is inspired by the manga Berserk, and it was made as part of our online armor crafting academy. Every shape and line that you see was made by hand, but I've been wondering how feasible it would be to 3D scan components of wearable armor and replicate them using a 3D printer, and so I've been testing out some options. All of our past custom projects are one-off creations that upon completion get shipped out to our clients never to return. But what if for future builds we can scan the full suits before shipping to have a little memento to print at scale, or possibly even print a life-size replica to display? So now you know one of my main motivations for this experiment. Behind the scenes I've been experimenting for a while and the best solution that I've found so far is the Shining 3D Einscan Pro HD and it's been able to get very accurate scans that other methods and devices have struggled with. It can capture very intricate details and even full color scanning. I have it hooked up to my main desktop here because it does require a strong PC to process all of the data if you have the detail set to high. I've also made scans of the Elven Helmet and the full suit of Berserk Armor and you're seeing some of that process here. It's projects like these that make me feel like we're living in the future. Now that we've got a clean scan, let's bring it to life with a Thinker X400 by Everyone. This printer was sent over for us to test, and I'll have details about pricing and specs in the description, and I'll share some of the highlights here. The Thinker X400 arrives in a large shrink-wrapped box on a pallet. It arrives pre-assembled, so all you have to do for setup is to take out the shipping supports and add the filament holder. It comes with pre-installed heavy-duty casters if you would like to wheel it around. It has an enclosed chamber with a massive 400 by 400 by 400 millimeters build volume, and this is particularly exciting to me because it feels like the perfect size for prints like large helmets or other large armor parts and props. The machine that you're seeing is a beta model used for development, and the release version will have some improvements and changes. For example, the release version has some additions like built-in Wi-Fi. There are several adjustments to the hot end, and various quality of life improvements all around. But even as an early release version, everything has worked great for my first project. Main selling points of the X400 include, of course, that it's a very large build volume. It prints very quickly at 500 millimeters per second, with 10,000 millimeters per second acceleration. It's also very quiet and stable. The format is Core XY. The control panel is clipper based, and the recommended slicer is Orca Slicer. The filament I'll be using is everyone's very own Hyperspeed PETG. I'll put pricing and other details in the description if you would like to see a quick overview, but since the example I'm showing here will vary slightly from the release model, if you're interested in this machine, I suggest looking at the official product page for the most up to date specs and features. To improve adhesion, I used a glue stick on the build plate and added a brim to the print. While we're printing, let's go over a few more of the features. The printer has a filament runout detection. It has a camera with AI support which can identify issues and pause the print. I didn't test it because I didn't even realize it had a built-in camera until after the sprint was finished, but I'll have to try out the AI time-lapse features in a future print. The speed of this printer is rated at 500 millimeters per second, which matches any of the high-end machines on the market. But of course, the larger your print, the longer it will take. And a helmet like this at my settings took around a day and a half. But once you slice your file, it only takes a couple of minutes of actual time to set up the machine and press go, after which you can be working on other things. Another use case of this machine is potentially in print farms. This printer is targeted at professionals and high-end enthusiasts, and it comes with 3D printing farm management software. I sliced and printed this with default settings using the installed 0.4mm nozzle. Well, let's see how it turned out.
I think it looks great. Pulling these supports off is very satisfying. After printing this out, I wish I could scan some of our past works too, but most of our custom clients are all over the place and the logistics of that really aren't ideal, especially years later. But I'll definitely want to scan and print some of the future projects and make scaled versions of our works going forward. This helmet was printed in PETG. PETG is a step up from the more common PLA filament. It's stronger and slightly flexible and heat resistant, but its rigidity can also make it harder to wear comfortably. So a print like this is probably best suited as a display prop. Now we can print the TPU version. TPU is a flexible rubber-like filament. It's tougher to print and prone to stringing, but it's ideal for anything that needs to bend and flex. The Thinker X400 is particularly well suited for printing TPU materials, offering remarkable stability with softer TPUs, including those with hardness levels of 70A and above. This is a production grade printer, highly suitable for batch manufacturing and high precision production. It proved to be very stable with these initial prints, and I'm planning to scan and print replicas of our future custom helmet projects with this machine. We do regular giveaways for our armor patterns, and I could see printing out some of these helmets for giveaways too, so leave a comment below if you'd be interested in giveaways for 3D printing helmets, or even in the 3D printing files. The TPU helmet is very satisfying to squish down. It always returns back to its original shape and seems very durable. I don't know how it would hold up to LARP, but for cosplay I think it would be great. If you're interested in the other helmets, we have both the foam and the leather builds and tutorials up on the channel. I'll leave a link in the description. I think both helmets printed nicely, and while we will keep making leather and foam tutorials on the channel, I'm also having fun exploring the 3D printing rabbit hole. Before we wrap up, I also have a question for our academy students. If you crafted a suit of armor using our patterns, would you want me to release many 3D models of the suit so that you could print your own replica models to paint and detail as collectibles? Thanks for watching, and let me know if you like this content. I never know if I should post non-tutorial style content on this channel. Sometimes I just want to share things we're doing in the shop, or some of the new devices we're testing like in this video. So if you do enjoy it, please be sure to like the video and subscribe. We'll see you next time.